freecoderscourse.com. All right, guys, we are back in Free Code Camp in the Advanced Algorithm section. So what are we doing today? We're doing Update Inventory. The task here is we get two different inventories. Each one is a two-dimensional array. What we have is the amount of stock we have and what that stock is. So we have 21 bowling balls. And then our new inventory, sometimes we have matching inventory. And what we want to do is we want to combine these arrays to return a single array that has new values and then we want to sort it so let me show you how I did this this was I did this on my first attempt It's actually uh, pretty similar to something I did at work uh, for analytics of combining like data on the front end normally you would do something like that on the back end but uh, for the sake of time I built it on the front end so how I started was with a simple for loop and what we wanted to do here was because at the end we want to turn array one so uh, what we want to iterate through our first array we just set up a simple for loop and we say well i is less than r2 dot length because we're iterating through the whole thing i plus plus and i think i left chat on whoops so let's go ahead and close that <laughs> uh, so we're iterating through the whole array now what we're doing next is we need to check array one to see if it already has like a bowling ball in it. Uh, check the value, the current value we're iterating through in array two to see if that value exists. So for instance, hairpin does, and we don't. We want to instead just go ahead and add that to it. So the way that I do that is I just create this. This uh, we want to get a boolean value because what we're going to do is if it doesn't exist, we want to add the whole thing into the array one. So for instance, in our example, half-eaten apple doesn't, so we're gonna add the, that array, its, its index value, into array one. But if it does exist, like bowling ball, we're just gonna update the total. And the way that I did that was using the every function, and we'll start by storing it into a variable that I called inventory exists. And we're gonna set this equal to we're going to iterate through using the every function. If you're not familiar with every, what it is is a, a method built into uh, built into arrays, and it, you set a condition, and it checks to see if that's true for every element in the array. So, so let's say you wanted you had an array of elements as one, two, three, four, five. If you set every array, if you would, could use every to check if all the values are greater or less than a number, and if one of them fails, it will return back false or true and so on and so forth. So the way that I did it is I just checked to see if, and you, you need to use the return statement, if the current item that we're iterating through, R2i, exists in here. Now not R2i, just i, we, we're checking for the name. The reason for that is because if we if we don't, let's say we have multiple inventories, it may throw it off down the road. And so we're saying, hey, is it is it true that it is not equal to the element we're checking, which is an index of the array? And notice how we're putting in one. So the element is, this is the element, excuse me, this is the element of current inventory or array one. And we're saying, hey, does this exist? All right, and one, because we're checking what type it is. Now with that, we're gonna go ahead and have, puts a little bit of logic. If it doesn't exist, add it to array, add it to R1, else add its stock to it, add its stock. We'll leave it at that. So we'll do an if, and we could just say inventory exists because uh, that's returning back a Boolean value. So if it's false, it won't happen. And then we'll have else. So if this is true, meaning that it doesn't exist, we're gonna add that to the value. So we just say r1.push, and we know what value to push because we're current, we're in our for loop. So there's there's not anything, oops, I put two, I'm gonna put i. So r2, i. Else, what we want to do is we need now we now need to find out the index value, and we can do that using find index. 
So we'll create a variable here. And you don't necessarily have to create a variable to do these things. Inventory exists or um, what I call it, what I'll be calling index val. I just think that it might be a little bit easier uh, and cleaner code to, uh, and to sell the point a little bit, r1.findindex. So we're gonna iterate through the first array, the array that we're adding to, because now we know that this value does exist in our in our current inventory array, our, or our r1 parameter, and we want to know where it exists. So we'll go ahead and use the find index function, which what that does is it returns the first value that it brings true to. And what we want is return where the element that we're iterating over in R1, basically the, the index of array one that we're checking, if that value, in this case it'd be bowling ball, dirty sock, whatever, is equal, equal, equal to R2, the current item that we're iterating, the current for loop item, and then of course the name of that product. So that's why we have the one there. Now once we have that, we'll have our index value, and then it's just a matter of taking our, our uh, one, and then the index val to target it, and then index zero, because now we're targeting, now we're targeting the actual um, stock amount in case of the bowling ball 21, and then we're gonna go ahead and just add to that value. We have R2 I, and then zero. And again, we know that because it's in the else statement, so we know it exists, and we're going ahead and targeting it, and we found the location with the find index. Now at this point, at this point, if we were to run our code, we're gonna pass some tests. Uh, what the issue is here, and we can check to see like, oh cool, so we have 88 bowling balls. So we're passing in 21, and we're passing in 67, 88. Everything's working, but now we need to sort it. We can do that with the sort function. Now, if you were gonna use sort, just sort, typically if you had an array of strings, you can go ahead and call uh, r1.sort and it would sort it for you. Now, uh, that's not gonna work. We gotta, we gotta do a little bit of, uh, of a callback function of it. And uh, the way that we do that is we, we, because we're checking an index value in the array to sort it by, that is a string, we just gotta do a little bit of extra work. So we're gonna do the callback function, that's part of sort, and in here, and again, it's gonna get a little messy in here. I should probably have sort, stored this in a variable, but uh, the idea is all the same. So we're gonna sort the array, and we're gonna use a ternary operator, which if you're not familiar with the ternary operator, don't worry, I'll, I'll break it down. And we're gonna say, look, is A1, this is one index value, and this is the next one, and we're saying, is that less than B1? This is how you're gonna check a string. And you can look it up in the documentation. Essentially, it, this is how it works. And what we want to do, if it is less than that, we want to return negative one, or we want to return one. Now, this is our statement. This is kind of like what's in an if, an if statement. Our, oops, uh, is A1 less than B1? If it's true, that's what this means. For the true statement, return negative one. For the else statement, return one. It's just a nicer and cleaner way of writing it, and it works for what we're trying to do. But after that, assuming I don't have any syntax mistakes, we are done and good to go. So we use a lot of different callback functions. If uh, this has been a video that I've, I've been wanting to do for a bit, uh, I left some of the advanced algorithms. Uh, but since I've become a developer and I've been practicing algorithms, you're seeing a lot of new stuff for me. The every function I don't think I've used. I don't know if I've used find index in the other ones or the sort or ternary operators. Just always trying to get better. So hope you found, guys found this helpful. As always, don't forget to join the Facebook group Code Tech and Caffeine. If you want to support me, you can at patreon.com slash coding tutorials 360. And don't forget to check out my course at coderscourse.com. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsors, Dev Mountain. If you're looking for a coding boot camp where tuition and housing is included, definitely check them out. Appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.